Madam Chairman, I will be videotaping. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice for all. been going on, there's been no opportunity for um, that committee to convene. Um, my second question is, could the water commissioners please also post their minutes and their agendas? You'll have to request that of the water commissioner. This is a joint meeting, so I am commission. I am requesting that. It is not. They didn't open. They don't have a quorum. They don't have a quorum. Uh, see, it was on the agenda. It was on yeah. the agenda, but they, but they, they do don't not have, open. They don't have a quorum, so they can't. Too bad, public servants. Um, and then I would also like to read into the record. Um, a letter that was sent to uh, Commissioner Hughes and the, the Fire and Water District as a whole. This was October 19th of 2018. I have been retained by Lisa Morales to represent her interest in resolving the problems posed by your false and harmful statements. On February 18, 2018, you issued a no trespass order to Ms. Morales. In the order, you make certain factual assertions that Ms. Morales behaved in an unacceptable fashion on January 25th, 2018. These assertions include the following. Number one, that Ms. Morales harassed members of the board or public. <coughs> Two, that Ms. Morales threatened members of the board or public. Three, that Ms. Morales engaged in violent physical conduct toward the board or the public. Subsequently, you permitted these lies to be published broadly in an article by Lydia Berner and, Ma and Matthew Burnell on March 8th, 2018. Twice the article refers to the, quote, incident, which is at best unclear and at worst a total fabrication. This has harmed Ms. Morales' reputation in the community, and as the nature of the order creates the implication that Ms. Morales is violent, beyond your questionable capacity to issue such an order as a quasi-public entity, it is clear from the evidence of these interactions that your assertions are works of fantasy and have no basis in reality. In the past, your agent, Melissa Goodell, 
caused a derogatory assessment of Ms. Morales' character to be published in the Wareham Village Suit on November 11, 2017, in reaction to her search for financial transparency in your organization. You did nothing to correct Ms. Goodell's behavior or apologize for it. Your distaste for Ms. Morales' Freedom of Information Act request and combative response to her request that you reveal documents is well recorded. Further, her call for your resignation is well known and documented. This was in regard to Mr. Hughes. It is clear that you have a long-standing animosity toward Ms. Morales and her inquiries into the activities of the Fire and Water District. It appears from the evidence that you have maliciously lied in retaliation for Ms. Morales' political activity. As a real estate broker, the harm to her reputation is not merely speculative, it is both quantifiable and pecuniary. Ms. Morales is considering a defamation claim against you as an individual and as the Water Fire District broadly. Litigation could be avoided, however, if you will rescind the no trespass order and issue a written apology to Ms. Morales for what I am sure you feel is a misunderstanding. There was absolutely no response to this letter, and this is my final offer to resolve this without further litigation and seeking substantial damages against the district, Ms. Goodell specifically, and Mr. Hughes specifically. Thank you. Do you have a copy of that, please? Yeah. This went. So it, it has to be. I, I well, it has to be entered into the records. So you have to provide us. You also copy. already have this by certified mail from last no. October. <laughs> um, request to this copy. There you go. I once again ask you to rescind the letter, or we will go to litigation immediately. Thank you. That's how you want to spend this district's money, Ms. Fernandez. That's fine. Well, we spend a lot of this in your thing. So we'll put it on the record. We'll put it on the record. Any other non agenda item public comments? You can advise everyone that the, the, the meeting is being videotaped. Recorded. Oh, I'm, that's correct, in the beginning. This meeting is being videotaped, not audio recorded, correct? Both. Both. Oh, okay. Video, so I was just so she said, video. I didn't mean that. So we have the uh, agenda item four discussion of the retirement of Deputy Ellis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything that you want to add? Anything or you want to talk? No, you're, you're retired. <laughs> you don't want to see me. No, I thought they were dead question. Oh, no, no, I thought they were dead question. Oh, no, no, I thought they were dead question. No. No, I, I can yeah, say I'm just... Welcome. welcome to the club. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Not the Chiefs are tired. Right? Yeah. I want to say thank you for all your service. Absolutely. To the How many years, Billy? Full time? 20? Right, man. Full in call. 41? 42? Something like that? Like that. Yeah. Uh, 35 to 40 anyway. Like over 40, definitely. Uh, the district certainly thanks you. All, all you've done for the district. What are we going to do for Santa Claus? Yes. Uh, one more year, I told Kat. Okay. Because, you know, we hate to replace Santa. Thank you, Bill. Well, next year, how's the station supposed to be open by next year? Uh, uh, a year or so? A year or so. A year and a half. Like so. the next yeah. Christmas after the half. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, so they're already working on a, something else. And since they haven't seen it here and everything up in the village. Yeah. Uh, yeah I don't think it'll be there by then. Not this year. Not this year. Next year, though. I don't see any direct in Yeah. No, I plan to, they're planning to run it up there this year, yeah. but it's the year after. Yeah, the year after, possibly. I think they said the 14th of December. I told Kat to come see you guys. Don't be Santa with your grandson. That's what I said. <laughs> are you staying around, Billy, or are you heading out? Well, For right now, I'm staying. your options. Yeah. Yeah, hey. Right now, I'm staying around. I figured I'd see you on an island with <laughs> I have flip flops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh yeah, flip flops. That, that's all I can picture. Flip flops with with golf, you know, golf flip flops and a golf bag on your shoulder. Yeah, mm -hmm. on Island. <laughs> yeah, a little a little warmer than that. This some place is a lot warmer. Some some place a lot has, warmer has than that. Palm trees. Palm trees and parrots. Bill was a grandfather also. I know. Bill was a grandfather. Grandfather? Yeah. Last week. <coughs> and that as well. Thank you. It's, a, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> so at that point, we'd have to generate after a discussion about um, how you guys choose to fill the position and what criteria, what, what you want to do for the, that once the time is expended and official date comes up. Um, so you should probably start a dialogue now as to what you guys want to do. Yeah, well, we're going to have to, we're going to have to discuss how, what process, what procedure we're going to follow to uh, uh, make that uh, appointment. Because the Board of Engineers are appointed by the Financial Committee. Uh, we, we do have the, the power under the, the bylaws to appoint an acting as well. That's something we need to discuss as a committee and decide how how you want to proceed. Uh, do you have any recommendations, Chief, uh, as to how what procedures you'd like to see us follow? Or? Well, we definitely should have some sort of interview process, and if you want to have a written exam, if you want to go that far, but definitely interview process and review. We have plenty of, of eligible candidates. Well, it, it'll, it'll be a matter of you guys making a decision, having quantitative measures to, to choose that, so we, we have a you know a clean process with no nobody having the feeling as if they were being excluded or things of that nature, but have a definitely like a testing process, uh, maybe a um, skill assessment center and interviews, uh, which would be kind of normal for that position, and then if subsequently if people within whether we go choose from within strictly or have a combination of uh, inside and outside uh, exam, and then. If there are other movements upward, then clearly we'll have to have another. If we like, we lose a ship commander, then we'd have to fill the ship commander's position also, depending on how that plays out. Clearly, yeah, depending on who, who's selected, who's is selected uh, in that process. So, like I said, that's a discussion we should have. And then, like I said, if you guys want to appoint a uh, an interim or an acting at some point, that would be probably advantageous too. Um, but at that point, like I said, it's up to you guys to have a, a discussion. But we can definitely work on. If you want to do skills and assessment center of some sort, and then like I said, interview process, you guys can sit down with the candidate. I can, or myself, the deputy Oswald, can be involved in the, you know, interview process. So you can get our input if you'd like. Yeah, we may need to sit down with you and review the budget as well. Absolutely. To see whether we, whether an interim or acting position is is feasible. Yeah. Given the financial. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's. Just for you guys to move forward so we can make a decision at some point. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, I think we need to work on that uh, yeah. right sooner rather than later. What we're probably going to do this afternoon, maybe this way, and get working on that. Yeah. Just, just for that, that agenda item. Yeah. I'm pretty much available evenings, other than next week. All next week, I won't be available. By the way, I'm their last. This is their, their last engineer. They had an exam process and, and yeah. uh, uh, assessments, and uh, so I mean they had a. They followed a very formal uh, process. Uh, I don't know. You know we should ask. For they probably have a copy of their check sheet, <coughs> the assessment items and stuff, right, right off the. I'm sure. I'm sure. The process sheet probably. Uh, uh, I know that uh, Bobby McDuffie was the one who set that up. Uh, he can be a, a good resource as well. But again, we, it's just something we need yeah. to work. I'm sure that as time goes on, it's going to be imperative that that position or a position gets appointed, or, or even if it's 
just a mere tone. Tough shoes to fill. You only have shoes. Flip -flops. Uh, yeah. <laughs> flip -flops. Tough flip flops. Flip -flops. Do those come with boot, a boot uh, version? The MK approved flip flop. Any other comments on John <coughs> So, agenda item five Board of Engineers report and discussions, which may include topics pertaining to personnel, payroll, procurements, and operations at the fire department. Okay, so we had a couple things come up. We were able to um, do some contacts, met with. Um, the Rock, which is a regional dispatch center out of Duxbury, they're going to be doing a substantial overhaul. So we may have some access, or actually we do have access to, we picked up some equipment today, which will go into the new station, which may save us some money. Um, some of the pieces are twenty dollars or $30,000 for the dispatch consoles. They're all essentially wow. extra <laughs> dispatch consoles that are barely, it, it was their extra dispatch consoles, two more used, two more extras. So we have access to them there. I think you say, what are you pricing on, 20 grand a piece? Uh, 27. $27,000 a piece. So there'll be some, hopefully, that'll help us in the shortfall in the FF&E um, department because of the cost escalation and price. So that was a kind of a godsend. And um, Captain Reardon was very helpful. Uh, and if he has anything else further, he'll, he'll let us know. But at the end of the day, like I said, that was a, that was a big score for us as far as getting that equipment uh, for free, the, all the cabinetry and the, 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 some of the stuff is just amazing that where they're going, through, they're going to be going through a major expansion and upgrade, they didn't want to see it go to waste. So they, they said, you know, mm -hmm. we could have access. So we picked up some Your stuff. Your is that game. Absolutely. Well, like I said, they don't want to see it go yeah. to use and they can't use it in, in the new facility the way they want to. So it'll, it'll be surplus to them. Mm -hmm. So that was good. Um, the generator we got for the new station was serviced. Um, so that's completely back in action. We're gonna get it back. We gotta get another body panel and a, a rollout tray for the batteries fabricated. But the generator tested out perfectly. We had some service work, you know, basically a tune-up. Uh, they adjusted some wiring in it. They adjusted the cycles in it. They did some painting on it. Uh, so that's ready to go. We'll have that back here so we can use it as a spare right now before it goes into the station. So my intent would be once the station project happens is to move that generator <coughs> mount it permanently at the station, the station, and then the existing station generator will go on to the trailer we, that, that, that's currently on, so we'll have a portable 60K generator. So we'll have a backup for any facilities a within. Mobile backup. Yeah. So I don't want to see the brand new one that we had to use clearly go to waste, so we'll, we'll keep that as a, as a spare and a backup. So that project's proceeding, uh, and that, like I said, that saved us probably, I'm going to say $90,000 towards the station thing, we don't have to procure that other generator for the station, so that was a $90,000 savings there for us. Um, I don't think of what else, anything daily operational wise? No. no, so I think that's about it. I've been working with Joe uh, off and on. I, we met with the engineer, uh, came down yesterday, um, so we're getting close to that 60% mark. Um, we did a cost reconciliation. There was a huge difference in cost. It turned out to be some of the glass in the building. One of the designs this had the doors as being glass. With the new standard for hurricane glass, it's, it's a 150 mile an hour impact uh, glass. So we removed that from the doors that, that, that cut about half of that differential out right there. Wow. So uh, we put a minimized the amount of glass in the building because it's just enormously expensive for that, uh, for that process. So we, we removed that as much of the glass out of the design as we could during the reconciliation. Yes. That's in the overhead doors? Yeah, well, the overhead doors in the building. So we cut down some of the size of the windows in the building to be smaller because basically you're paying by the square foot of this triple pane, super um, absorbent, 150 mile an hour impact glass. Yeah, the DP50s? Yes. So <coughs> they, were, they were saying, um, yeah, the, the, we're in the hurricane velocity zone is right. the thing. So anyhow, um, that went well in the reconciliation. We're still tight, tight, tight on the plus side, but we're still, we're not, we're not off the mark. So right now we're looking at like 502 a square foot, which is what the cost estimators came back in, which is higher than what we did. But yeah, with all the stuff I had to cut out over that six week period when I was working with them, we're kind of right there on the precipice. So hopefully we come back a little more favorable when we actually go to bid. 
<laughs> when do they plan on, uh, uh, do they have a target date of when they're hoping to get, to get this out to bid? So Joe can... was saying hopefully, um, I, got a, I don't have the paper right in front of me, I'm sorry, um, to set up the station. Um, I was hoping June, I think is what he said. So it would be targeting to be on the ground for August, I think is what, it, depending on contract, because there may be some delaying contract to review, like get, get as much of the front load in the contract reviewed ahead of time, but it'll still be between once we award the contract and making sure the lawyer is approved of the wording of the contract, our lawyer, and then they look at it. So he's saying conservatively, if there's any you know, back and forth between them for wording that everything, we have time to work on that. So he was saying hopefully August. We'll, we'll see how it pans up. But we're doing we're doing well, and like I said, the engineer has done a great job. He's worked with me. I'm probably on the phone with him and emailing him daily. Uh, so a lot of back and forth with him and Joe. Joe's been a really very helpful also in that process. So um, we've had a lot of um, meetings of just matching our heads together, trying to figure the best way to go around things, uh, keeping the cost control. Unfortunately, the escalation due to construction material has been our nemesis because we, we have no control of that market. Yeah, the labor market too. It's, it's, yeah. It's, uh, I, I, I've, I've talked to other people now a bit on projects and the prices are coming back much, much higher than, than what we estimated. Because like our original- Any of them have estimated. You know, who, who, who was it recently just had to go for more money? Ah, uh, was it yeah. yeah. Robinstown? Robinstown. Yeah. 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 I mean, they, they were way Marion, yeah, a few places have got had to yeah, go back yeah. just because the, the, it's, between it's, labor and, like I said, the cost with, with all the uh, materials, it's just yeah. it's exorbitant. You, you really, you, when we have no control over that whatsoever. So, yeah. any, uh, any questions? Anything else I can answer for you? You might, I don't know if there's, uh, if you're in a scavenger mode, I understand municipal maintenance is going through the Mine at school. Mine at school. Yeah. And they got a nice countertop, a year old countertop. That but in, but by the time we got over there, the, the, it, it had been <laughs> fairly clean. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah we, we were invited. We went, I went and looked, and there wasn't, by the time we got there, it, it wasn't a lot of, there wasn't a lot of material that we, we could utilize, sadly. So um, I get the folding table for the kids to have lunch at the station, but beyond that. Yeah, the chairs are kind of low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 But, uh, hire yeah, we'll hire. Hey, is that a short comment? Yeah. Um, uh, anything else? Please, Joe. Be careful. I know. Anything else I can help you with? Any other questions? It was only my business, Joe. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm kidding. I gotta run. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. 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 That's everything from the Board of Engineers. Yes. So we'll move on to the Fire Station Building Committee's report. We have a Matt holding Matt Hatter. Uh, finally, I have two items for your consideration. It was, suggest it was suggested to me. It was suggested to me that um, you might be you might be looking to replace Richard McDonald. busyness of the fire station project that we move our meeting to Thursday night coincidental with the Tucum meeting so that if something comes up that we go on we can send it right down the table to you and you can deliver it and vote on it. Maybe save a few days here and a few days there. Is there going to be that? Well I guess there's going to be a flurry of items. Once the once contract, the contract once the contract's left, but so we're just going to be bystanders. 
I haven't I haven't talked to the I have no problem. Actually it's more convenient that way, I think. If he still wanted to be a rigger. Uh, he, well, he, he still he, had he, interest. I said, uh, you get the minutes, I said, he's, he's still going to be, you know, when I talked to him the last time he left here, it's a touchy, touchy situation. He's done pretty well. He's the owner. But he said, well, thanks for keeping me on the committee. And I told him, I said, I still got you, I'm still carrying you on the committee. You know, you're in Florida. He said, I'll be back May Memorial Day. And uh, when did he He left in October. October. Yeah. But he never he never thought he never filed a resignation. And I asked him to. If you know if he was if he had planned to uh, resign from the committee, I asked him please turn it around. The only the issue the only issue the issue that I have is I think he's an asset to the committee, but the the problem is if we have something that comes up on that evening and we need people to vote on it, if you need a quorum, but you also need him to be able to vote as a participant. So mm -hmm. he would either have to be, and I don't know if this would be legal to be available by phone when you're doing that. We have, we adopted the electronic. That's right, we did. Yeah. Yes. Um, he would have to be available for that because, as you know, he's a voting member yep. of the um, by station building committee, so that would be my only concern would he be able to do that so you're projecting at this point you have a flurry of meetings in the next we month to two while yeah. he'll be away well, we get a flurry of votes to take decisions to make. 